What's up everybody? Ryan Pulis here from the Pulis Group with today's real estate tax tips. We're a tax and accounting firm specializing in tax planning for real estate investors and small business owners. Today we're going to discuss partial asset disposition rules and how to use them to reduce your tax burden. So start with a question. Would you depreciate two roofs for the same building at the same time? The answer to that is likely no if you can help it. Let's take a quick look at how this might happen. Let's say you purchased a rental property in the year 2000. Included in the cost of the buildings are roof, walls, and the other various components of the building structure. So at the time, you didn't do a cost segregation study. So the building structure is a single asset on your depreciation schedule. Now in the year 2023, we replace a roof and it, with a cost of $20,000. So it's capitalized and placed on the depreciation schedule as a separate asset in 2023. So now you have the original building, which includes the cost of a roof, and this new replaced roof on your depreciation schedule that are both being depreciated over 27 and a half years. So now you are depreciating two roofs. But there's only obviously only one that's serving its actual purpose. So what can we do? Well, luckily, we can find the answer in Treasury Regulations 1.168i-8, which cover asset dispositions. And in there is a section specifically geared to, towards partial asset dispositions. So the regulations allow you to deduct the net tax basis of the original roof as a loss on disposal. The net tax basis is the original tax basis of the asset, less depreciation taken to date. You determine the net tax basis of the roof by allocating part of that building cost and depreciation to the roof itself. So this must be done on an originally filed return by the due date, including extensions. You generally can't amend or use a change in accounting method to go back in time and take the partial asset disposition. If you use a partial asset disposition, you may also deduct the removal cost, like transport and dump fees for the pieces of the asset being removed. Otherwise, these costs are generally required to be capitalized and depreciated. So now let's discuss how you calculate the amount of loss for partial asset disposition. On the previous slide, I said a, part, a portion of the cost and prior depreciation for the building structure must be allocated to the roof, but how exactly is this accomplished? First, if you can identify the actual cost, you must use that amount. So for example, a contractor that built the building tracked the actual cost from the original build and you have this information. In that case, you're required to use the actual cost. Otherwise, the IRS gives us three reasonable methods which they determine are can be used to come up with some sort of allocation. So one is a the producer price index, PPI. This allows you to discount the cost of the replacement portion of the asset to its placed in service year cost using the PPI. To use this, you really need to know what you're doing or you can easily end up with an inflated, inflated asset cost. I don't recommend this method for anyone that's not intimately familiar with construction costs because there's a lot of room for error. Second, the second option is a pro rata replacement cost. This allows you to take the replacement cost of the improvement divided by the replacement cost of the entire asset and calculate a ratio to use on the existing net tax basis of the asset to determine the partial disposition amount. So let's say it costs $10,000 to replace the roof and we're able to determine it's $100,000 to replace the entire building structure. Like is this a ratio of 10%, which can be used on the existing net tax basis for disposal. So generally to, to determine the replacement cost of the asset, you'll need to hire an appraiser. The third method, and by far the best for most taxpayers, is a cost segregation study. So a cost seg study is an engineering based study designed to reallocate the cost of the property among its various components. So a cost seg study will allocate a specific cost to the roof, roof and other building components so they can be easily identified. Let's take a quick look at an example here. So in this example, 
Let's say you own a $100,000 residential rental property, excluding the cost of land to keep things simple. The original roof represents $8,000 of that purchase price. So after 10 years, the roof's replaced. The building structure itself has total depreciation taken to date of 36,364, of which 2,909 is for that $8,000 roof. So following the at partial asset disposition rules, this taxpayer can deduct a $5,091 loss on partial asset disposition for the original roof. And that's calculated by taking the $8,000 original cost minus the $2,909 depreciation taken to date, which gives us a $5,091 net tax basis in the roof, the old roof. And the new roof is capitalized and depreciated as usual. If you own commercial real estate, this can get even better because we can use the Section 179 rules to combine a loss from partial asset disposition with the immediate write-off of the replacement property by using Section 179 depreciation. In this case, it's, we're, we're specifically dealing with qualified real property, QRP for short. So QRP represents improvements made to non-residential real property. This includes roofs, HVACs, fire security and alarm systems, and security systems. Qualified real property, QRP, is eligible for Section 179 depreciation. So as a reminder, Section 179 allows you to immediately deduct up to $1,080,000 in depreciation in year one. Those are the 2022 limits. You can use Section 179 to write off the cost of the new roof and deduct the loss for the partial asset disposition from the original roof in the year of replacement. This is a somewhat aggressive strategy, so make sure you know what you're doing and you're working with a professional, but there's nothing that prevents you from using this strategy, and it can save you a ton of money in taxes if it's done properly. So to recap, partial asset dispositions allowed under Treasury Regulations 1.168I-8, this regulation allows taxpayers to recognize loss on the disposal of a portion of an asset. The net tax basis is used to determine the loss on the partial asset disposition. If the actual cost is known, it must be used. Otherwise, the IRS provides three methods to determine the net tax basis. PPI, producer price index, uh, the replacement cost, or using a cost seg study. The cost seg study is your best bet and by far the best for most taxpayers. So that about wraps up our discussion today on partial asset dispositions. I hope this video was helpful. Feel free to comment below and hit the like and subscribe button. We're always taking on new clients and we'll review your prior year tax returns for planning opportunities. If you'd like to work with us, then hit us up on our webpage at thepulisgroup.com forward slash contact. That's T-H-E-P-U-L-I-C-E-G-R-O-U-P dot -E 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 -E